at 6 p.m. and we will call the, <clears throat> excuse me, regular Planning and Zoning Commission of the Town of Florence being held on Thursday, March 7th to order. And with that, uh, Maricela, would you please do roll call? Commissioner Vanderstar? Present. Commissioner Capolongo? Present. Commissioner Pro will not be with us tonight. Vice Chair Adam? Present. Chairman Frost? Present. We have a quorum. Thank you very much, and we appreciate our two council liaisons being with us. Always appreciate your, your presence here with us. Um, if you'd please rise, Commissioner Vanderstar is going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Our, we have a call to the public for public comment on issues within the jurisdiction of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Individual commission members may respond to criticisms made, may ask staff to review a matter raised, or may ask that a matter be put on a future agenda. However, members of the commission shall not discuss or take action on any matter during an open call to the public unless the matters are properly noticed for discussion and legal action. And with that, is there anyone here this evening that would like to address the commission? Marty I only see one person online. Nope. Is anyone? No one online. Okay. With that, we will close the call to public. Item number five, discussion slash approval slash disapproval of the minutes of the regular meeting conducted on February 15th, 2024. And for the... Um, Commission members information, I've, I found um, three typos in those, in the minutes, and have sent those in, and the minutes that Maricela has have been corrected for that. Yes, I have received the updated minutes. With that, any discussion, concerns, comments, corrections? We'll entertain a motion then. Make a motion that we approve the meeting minutes of the regular meeting February 15th, 2024 with the corrections, the typos from Chair. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion for approval by Vice Chair Adam with a second by Commissioner Capolongo. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Unanimous on that. <coughs> Agenda item number six, new business. Presentation slash approval slash approval with conditions or denial of a design review for home products by, the Mer by Meritage Homes for Anthem at Merrill Ranch Units 41 and 43. Maricela? Tonight, our one action item has to do with the design roof, design reviews for some homes in Anthem at Merrill Ranch on the northwest side of Hunt Highway and Merrill Ranch Parkway. This is for units 41 and 43. They have been approved by town council. They have been recorded. And the group that has purchased those lots are, is Meritage Homes. They're looking at 159 lots between the two of those units, 55 in unit 41 and 104 in unit 43. They're proposing eight different floor plans with three different elevations each, and all of the homes will be single story. There are nine different color schemes, and we have set the condition that they will not be built the same, or they will not build the same home elevation color combination next door or across from one another. And to give a visual about where these are at, they're not along the front of a hunt high, except for most of 43. So 41 is on the left side and 43 is on the right. Designs that they have submitted include homes that range between 1,370 square feet and 2,342 square feet. They sent us architectural projections of what, and elevations of what they're looking to do. And included in those projections are a variety of roofing styles and colors. They are going to use the tile for the roofs. They're going to include some stone veneers as well as some wood 
sightings. They have different garage door styles as well as entryways and light fixtures. They've also included garages that are more recessed to make, come to focus the living areas and the entranceway of these homes. And they've also included the standard items that are found within Anthem at Mail Ranch, which is those stucco pop-outs. And not only are those around some of the garages, but all of the windows and all different four of those elevations, the front, side, and rear. They also have some of those pop-outs around the doorways. They have vents, and those have pop-outs as well. And they also have little decorative accents that are in tile, either on the top, and sometimes they also have the wood boards on the window. This is another look at one of the elevations that they've proposed within their development. Now, a lot of the colors that they have brought forward, there are 12 different color schemes. And the home, <coughs> these are varying differences of tan, gray, red, brown, and off-white, with accents utilizing these blue, reds, a darker, more bolder blue and reds and yellows. And this is to bring those out and pop them a little bit more from the background of the main home elevation. They have the roof tiles, as well as some different types of stone veneer that'll go on the sidings of the house. And those veneers will mostly be in the front. They've also included some standard landscape plans. This is different from some of the things we've brought for because they do have one standard landscape plan, but they've also included some packages to upgrade to different types of plants, shrubs, and ground cover. And that is to the choice of the person looking to purchase the property. They've also included some packages for the rear to do landscaping if the owner so chooses. They do have a basic rear landscaping, which is just the granite put down in the back and then the owner can decide what to do from there. Or they can move up to a level two or four, which includes some plants. And in level four, it even has a grassy area. And just to give an idea, this is the standard packet for the front. So it mostly includes two trees, shrubs, and as well as granite. And then they have the automatic irrigation system included as well. As for the rear, they have these three different packages with your most basic on the left, and then it increases as you go further up the levels. And as I said, that's all based on what the owner wants for their property. With that staff, didn't find any deviations that would come from the Anthem at Merrill Ranch plan. We also didn't see anything that would not be cohesive with the town development code. And we found that it provides a quality housing product for the minimum number of lots that they have to be built on. With that, we recommend approval for this design review package. And the Planning and Zoning Commission may approve, approve with conditions, or deny the design review application, PZ 2415. And our conditions are listed within the staff report. And these are conditions that are also on other design review reports from places like Pulte or D.R. Horton. With that, are there any questions? It, if, I, if I could, could you just go back to, the, it's, it wasn't in the packet um, that we have in our books, just the overview map of where the parcels are again? Yes. Thanks. So, Maricel, just for clarification as well, they are masquerading Unit 30 or Unit 43 right now, correct? Yes. Okay. Am I not? Am I not? Oh, there it is. Never mind. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mary. Commission members, any questions or concerns or comments? I'll, I'll run through a couple. Um, in the Meritage Packet, and I'm not, it's under the uh, project narrative under garages, 
they say um, each architectural style provides style specific garage door designs and the next sentence some of the doors include glass inserts as shown on the garage exhibit um, I think that's a neat idea but it, the garage exhibit does not show any glass inserts so I don't know if that's a, something that was unintentionally included or if it was something that we want and um, just didn't get shown on the but it just needs to be corrected okay I'm, I'm, I'm fine with either way it just is inconsistent right now that's something I can ask them if that will be included. Um, on the general landscaping front yard upgrade level one, I just noted that um, their key does not include the symbol for the um, river rock. That's just a, a minor thing. Their, their key just doesn't include that. The symbology that for the river rock, not a big deal, just pointing that out. <laughs> um, and just a, a big thumbs up on the level three landscape package that um, the turf is all artificial turf. So we have zero water use there, but have all the aesthetics. That's awesome. Another thing that um, I, I wanted to say to Meritage, and I wish they were here to hear me say it. Actually, we do have a representative hey. who has arrived. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks for being here. So um, I, I really appreciate that you're treating the, the, the gates, because there's so many developments that I go in with the, as I move around the county, and I get around the county a lot, that many of the gates are just wood gates that start out looking really nice, and after about a year, they just look terrible. They just don't match the nice homes and the nice look that we've striped. But you've got the gates treated here to match the, the building. Big thumbs up for me, thank you. And then I guess we can ask you the question about the window in the garage. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, please give us your name. And Good evening, my name is Michelle Yuhan with M Architectural Consulting. I'm here on behalf of Meritage Homes. Um, so for the glass inserts, it should be an exhibit unless it got left out. We'll check on that, but um, yeah, some of the garage doors do include the glass. So that should be a part of it, just to create the diversity in the street scene. So some garage doors will just be solid, other ones will include that. Great. So we'll just verify, and if that was kept out of the exhibits, we'll provide it. Okay. Great, thank you. Thanks. And then, now that you're up here, let me a ask you a question. I, I noticed in your typical plot plans that there are four of them that have setbacks of 20 feet or greater from the sidewalk to the front of the garage and then four of them at 18 feet, and some research that we've done recently indicates that there are many vehicles that people are driving now that their length is greater than 18 feet, and knowing that many people in today's world use their garage not as a place to put cars, but a place to do storage, this means that in many instances, the, the back of those vehicles are actually hanging onto the sidewalk, which is against the law, because you can't obstruct that, and they can be cited for it. So a request is if it's possible, and it looks like from just a quick look at the idea of these plot plans that all those that are, have the 18-foot setback could be pushed back so that we at least have 20 feet. Um, yeah, let me bring that back to Meritage and see if they can go ahead and incorporate it, and then can I communicate it back through you? That, that would be great. Okay. Just, a, just a, a request just so that we can park cars there and not get people in trouble. Yes, understood. And with that, thumbs up. Looks good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Commission members, anything else? Um, this, this isn't for you. This is actually for staff. Um, safe to assume though, that the, say the landscape package one for the backyard with nothing, it's just up to the owner, mm -hmm. that will, there'll be a time limit on when they, like the rest of the HOA stuff, they have to get it spruced up by X amount of time, right? Do you mean for the rest of the community they need to have yeah. landscape plans? Yes. Yeah, okay. So landscape plans do come later. Okay, no, but yeah. But just for these homes. Yeah, right. No, so yeah. that, that, you know, somebody says, oh, I'm going with the landscape package number one and then just has a dirt lot forever. What if it's the backyard? It's up to them whether if they want to have just. If I might, Mr. Chairman. Um, Commissioner Capolongo, keep in mind that the town does not enforce the HOA regulations. Oh, no, absolutely. I was, just, I was wondering if, if you it have it in the, if, Yeah, if it's in the HOA CCNRs, then they would have to abide by those. Yes. Thank you. 
Okay, with that, commission members will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion that we approve PZ 24-15 with the stipulations uh, from staff and with the agreement to take a look at the driveway that is 15 feet. 18 feet. I will second. Okay, we have a, a motion for approval of PZ 2415 by Vice Chair Adam and a second by Commissioner Vanderstar with the amendments or with the stipulation and requests noted this evening. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Like we're unanimous up here. Thank you. Well, that will move to item seven, Director's Report, Western Crossing Update, and status of PUDs. Larry, are you doing that? I'll do Western Crossings, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission. Um, just if you've noticed any additional construction going on out there parallel to uh, State Route 287, it's because they finally got the permit from um, SCID to put in the larger uh, water line, which is necessary in order to get the fire flows necessary out there for hydrant pressures and things of that nature. It also uh, uh, starts the extension out 287 that's going to be necessary for other future developments as they come along. So that's, that's what's kind of going on out on, on 287 right now. As I'm aware, as what I'm aware of now, it's not obstructing any traffic or anything like that. But uh, if you do see construction, that's what they're doing. Looks like we also have a roundabout happening here. Yeah, it doesn't have anything to do with the Western Crossing, but roundabout is, is going strong from what I understand. I came in on the, the new route to get into town, and it's, uh, they're busy out there, it looks like. And I'll let Maricela take care of the status of the PUDs. So she has all the upcoming hearings. CD Farms went to town council for its first hearing and its first reading. Well, not first hearing, but the public hearing and the first reading on March 4th or this past Monday. Several. Residents did come and speak to the project, and the representatives were there. CD Farms will go back on March 18th for its second reading and final action for town council. Florence 287, that PUD, will also be going for its first reading and public hearing on March 18th. At this time, we don't have complete set dates for the northeast corner of Attaway and Hunt Highway or Attaway Crossing, but we have tentatively set that they will be coming back for planning and zoning, public hearing and recommendation on April 4th. That's the tentative at this time. Great, thank you for the updates. Call to the commissioners, current events. Mm -hmm. Wow, quite much this evening. I think the only thing that's, that's about to happen or currently happening within the town is our, um, was it third Fridays? Uh, events in the downtown area and uh, farmer's market. So everybody's encouraged to support those, those are always fun. And we have our inaugural um, Florence Glow this Saturday. Glow and Glow. Sorry? Is it Flow and Glow? Flow Glow, yes. Flow and... <laughs> oh, very good. Thanks, everybody. Commissioner Capolongo, your favorite motion? I'll make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> a second. Okay, we have a motion from Commissioner Capolongo and a, a, and a second from Vice Chair Adam to adjourn. All in favor, please say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you.